YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host TKK and we are back with another video guys. Today we are going to dial things back yet again and we're going to do a comparison today. In the description of this video you're going to have timestamps so feel free to cater to whatever your interest might be in a specific game. I'm going to shoot each particular segment as its own video and then we'll mesh this content up. Listen to the talking points. I want to start by just telling you this is the expectations. And so within this video, what I'm going to do is just run gameplay. Both TVs will be set to high dynamic range. We are using a Denon receiver. It's a 970H model. This does feature HDMI 2.1 in and HDMI 2.1 out. So we got an RTX gaming PC 4090. Nvidia graphics card is what we're going to be using to base this. I'm using this system because it's going to put me in the best position to play games in 4K at max settings at 60 plus frames per second. And so this puts me in a position where, you know, while I'm doing these clips, I can enjoy myself when trying to just be mobile and not having to worry about lag or any type of, you know, system stuttering from lack of performance and hardware. In any event, both of these TVs you know, great options. We've done the first comparison. If you hadn't seen it after you watch this, check it out. If you wanna support the channel, all the options are down below. So we're gonna get right to it. All right, guys. So we're gonna start with this game called Wulong Fallen Dynasty. Now I've never in my life played this title I have no personal interest in like playing this. And so I did grab this and, uh, you know, got it on the system just for testing purposes here. Um, you know, I wanted to try something new like this and start the video with this because it's something I've never seen. And so, you know, I could just experience it new as if, you know, I was sitting right with you guys. So the game appears to be locked at 60 frames per second, which isn't an issue. I have gone as far as setting the graphics in the display settings within the title and there are some really nice settings so high dynamic range is present and it's active and by the way the receiver does have that and so do the tvs of course so what we're seeing is a fair representation of hdr with both being set the colors are absolutely radical on the quantum dot oled um i'll say it's not a night and day but they are definitely there you know so just like the small piece of grass that's to the left of him, his left leg as he's standing there. It's just, it looks really good on that QD OLED. This is the A95K on the left, the G3 on the right. Um, you know, there's nothing about the image that I'm seeing right now that makes me feel like there's more wow factor going on with the G3. And I've read the comments from the prior video we did comparing these and I'm seeing I'm seeing the same tale that I always see whenever something goes against Samsung and it's, oh, they look more real on this TV. Knock it off. All right, there's not much I need to do within this game. I really don't want to spoil it. I think I'm going to go ahead and actually end up picking this up on Steam and checking the game out myself. Um, but one thing I do want to point out that the LG still has great game optimization feature. Um, and you can see right there, it says NVIDIA G-Sync. Uh, VRR uh, you know there was some discussion in my prior video I'll card it in right now and it was just speaking my truth about it you know one of the things that you know this TV along with the C3 doesn't have this year that it had prior um, as early as 2019 is that Windows doesn't detect it as being G-Sync certified um, you know so what workaround they're using I'm not sure I mean yeah you go to their website it says one thing their boxes no longer, you know, indicate that, you know, um, they have NVIDIA G-Sync. So I'm, I'm not sure if the partnership is changing or what's happened. You know, these are just things that me being a PC gamer, I pay attention to. It's something that LG has always been able to hold on to to make them, you know, better in the gaming space. Now, both of these displays look good, but depending on the content, like this content, where you're seeing a lot of reds and things like that, I'm for sure going with the QD OLED. I'm definitely going with the QD OLED. Um, you know, there's not enough white in this type of game for me to see, for me to feel like, yeah, I got to have what MLA brings to the table. We're going to move on to another title, though. Shout out to Tomb Raider. 
I like this game because of a couple of different reasons for this test. It has high dynamic range. Um, it's also a dated game, but it still looks good. So it's something that I think is a good representation of tried and true. Um, it does have a lot of greenery and, you know, colorful and nature based background into it. And so I think it'd be a good, you know, showcase again, timestamps down below. If this isn't your type of game, uh, we're going to do more videos like this with a conglomerate of different titles, each uh, video, but I want to get into some settings with this thing first. So just to show you guys what we're working with. So the benchmark shadow of the tomb Raider. Interesting title here, man. Cool thing about this too, it kind of lets us see the frame rate also. Keeping in mind, this is gauged off of the graphics card. This has nothing to do with the displays, the frame rate. Looks absolutely beautiful. There's those colors, man, on that QD OLED, I'm telling you. It doesn't matter what you think about them. Getting some vegetation and such in there, some greens. They both look really good. The archway of that force on that LG looks really nice, really clean. But the way that sun is coming above the bird on that Sony is, is just pretty epic. Whew, there we go. Some sunlight. Nothing look overexposed in person. Keeping in mind the camera's trying to track both of these simultaneously. It's gonna be tough for it to do. Colors are darker on the LG. Might lead some to believe they feel they look more natural, but people say the same thing when they look at a Sony after they see a Samsung too. Vibrancy and pop is not a bad thing. Potential is a good thing. Man, look how the reds hit on the left. Gosh. Oh man. I do halfway naked. All of them people are. This is sick. <laughs> this is sick. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now, this game is on PC, of course. So we're gonna just go to some of the settings. Let's go to options and we'll run a benchmark again. Let's go to display, just so I can show you guys. We're gonna leave brightness right where it is. I'm not worried about the game kind of tuning brightness. Let's just let the displays do the work. Direct X12 is turned on, full screen, exclusive full screen. Um, the monitor, obviously, it's an RTX 4090. It's one of those cards. No deep learning super sample. This is an upscale method. Often, something like it used on consoles. I don't like to play with this feature. Um, you could definitely keep your opinions, but uh, I buy the kind of hardware I do so that I can get native results. Uh, the refresh rate, we're going to stick to 120 hertz. The anti aliasing, we're going to keep it at FX AA. No V Sync and a stereo 3D, we're going to keep that turned off. Go and take a look at the graphics. So the preset here is kind of like high. If you go to high, there's still things you got to turn on. And once you modify, just like the prior transition in game, um, it changes it to custom. So, you know, when we look at things like um, the hair functionality, pure hair was turned on, but you can actually turn it to very high on this game. Unlike the, the prior game, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it's like it's it's normal or it's 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 either on or normal. Um, so very high was what I wanted. 
Also, I wanted the reflections. Um, I'm not seeing that. Actually, here it is, spectacular reflection quality. That was turned on high. I wanted that to be on very high. I like to play with things turned up as much as I can. One of the great things I like about PC gaming is you can always revisit a game. In any event, let's get a benchmark running here. All right, so this one is going to start off with uh, something that the MLA should definitely show better in. We got snow here. Now, keeping in mind, I do have a cinematic base or a, I have the blue filter turned off or on the reflection off. Um, it gives the LG more of a warm base. That's my preference. Um, you know, so it will give it an overall green look. Um, I don't want any of my LG fans to feel discouraged. The whites are definitely pure on the MLA by default. It's a really good thing. They look really nice. Um, this takes us in where we can definitely see some nice sun at the top, man. That is just hitting on that QD OLED. It's definitely looking good on the uh, right, but man, it's just that reflection, that, that glare of light, that beam is just, it's there, you know? What do you guys think? Tell me what you think about the white, that water. Look at these greens. These look very much like the same. That green is just popping a little bit more in that QD OLED. It's just the potential, you know? You always wanna have as much saturation potential as possible, because you can dial it up, dial it down if you want to. They both look phenomenal, remarkable, honestly. Tell me what you think about the water. How's the water looking to you? Is it looking more pink on the QD OLED? And I say that because it's a white color. It's a whitish base. All right, I want to turn some attention over to a little bit of Destiny, you know, just because it's a super colorful game. Tons of different colors, and I think it does a pretty good job of, you know, inviting us to, to see what's, uh, what's possible by way of uh, these two different technologies. Um, I actually just want to go to the Cosmodrome, to be perfectly honest with you. And okay, let's just take a look at this, man. You know, the screen is tearing on both of these and it's bugging me out, but it's all good. I can, I can bear with it for this, uh, particular transition. Um, I have to research that I'm not sure. Uh, but, uh, man, these both look really, really good. I'll just kind of do a slow pan. Talk to me in the comments. What are you thinking? Looking at the viewfinder. Clouds look more white on the, uh, the LG for sure. More of a pink hue on the uh, QD OLED. I am reading from more and more people that are saying that, hey, man, you know, the whites do it for me. Um, I want to know what you guys think. I don't know. As a gamer with the gaming setup, the colors do it for me. <clears throat> because the observation of the white being more pink isn't um, so exaggerated looking at one display by itself. Um, it's just not. What are you guys thinking? What's that red look like? What's some greens looking like? Talk to me. The 895K is a year old, so Sony has a successor that's coming. Um, what will it offer us? You know, how inviting will it be? I like the overall look of the LG for this game better. The colors look much better though on the Sony though. I'm, I'm gonna admit it. Let's talk about it. All right guys, so I wanna conclude this video with some talking points and a little bit of homework for you to consider. Uh, we will be doing another video, a third comparison of these two with different games and I'm gonna make the titles much more aggressive, much more um, extreme from a graphical fidelity so we can just you know have some really in-depth talking points. So make sure y'all keep it locked for the next video. I'm definitely gonna be putting Cyberpunk on there. That was something that was recommended and that ray tracing, man, listen, it looks remarkable on that game um, as well as some other games that are gonna have more dark scenes, things like that. And I wanna get that content shot probably before the week is over. 
So it's 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 Tuesday as we're shooting this. Um, these TVs, depending on how you catch the sale of the A95K, they're about the same in the comparable sizes. What I mean is the 25 inch of this for 2,500, you, you probably, depending on how the sales roll, you might be able to find a 65 inch A95K. But I do think that the retail for it now is like three grand, 2,900 or something like that. A lot of people don't cover the A95K. It's a very expensive TV. So, you know, when it came out, it was four grand. Um, you know, some people didn't see the value in it. I did, I got it, I still have mine. I didn't just rebuy this to, you know, get it to you guys. Um, it's a bedroom TV. And since swapping it with the 90C, putting it in the bedroom and this down here, this has been the setup. Um, with that being said, I think it's a great TV to kind of showcase and compare to the G3. Um, you know, I cover this in the space of gaming because this is how I realistically enjoy the G3. The A95K is not like a predominant gaming TV, but it's definitely gaming capable. Um, and for those, you know, that might complain about the lack of HDMI ports, that's going to continue through the A95L also. I don't know. I just kind of feel like, you know, find one platform and enjoy that platform and switch to HDMI's if you need to. Um, buying any fancy switchers or anything like that, you're introducing more input latency. So a couple of transitions prior to this conclusion, part of this video, I kind of talked about that going into the receiver, you're introducing more latency. Uh, so you want to just try to keep it strictly from whatever graphics card you use and be it a PC or console to the display. That is like the one to one, how you really want to play if you can. Um, so for those of you that are going through receivers and stuff, that's, that's why like I don't I don't really make a big fuss about you got to have a certain kind of receiver because all I really needed the receiver to do is just to pass through the audio through eARC. So if it can do that, then that's all that matters for me as a gamer. Um, in any event, the displays are good. I think Destiny looks better on the um, the G3. You know, the cal the colors just they just set better. Um, the colors look better. They have more pop on the A95K, but again, it's just that potential vibrancy and you can definitely dull out the colors on the a95k and i'm gonna be honest with you they look more saturated on the 95b than they do on this but you know this tv has like a very perfect blend in my opinion as to you know the kind of saturation that you would want if it looks too saturated on video it's just because this looks more dull and i've got the volume turned up on this tv to try to compensate it i got it in a way that i would you know prefer to play it on um, but I want to know what you guys think because this is really all about you, the engagement. Let's let's keep that going. I'm going to catch you guys on the next video. I'm going to see you in a couple of days. And until the next time, peace, God bless, and as always say, Max Love.